Hello, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. This is Christopher Stilson. He is a psychic medium. He has his own podcast on our channel, and he comes on to The Advisor very often, but you also can find him on his channel where he has all his podcasts that he's created with The Advisor, and they're amazing. He has touch topics that will change your lives, so I highly suggest that you check out his podcast. He will sh shed you with information that will just change your life and change the way you think and feel. Today, Christopher is going to talk about the afterlife. So listen carefully. I'm very excited to hear about this topic. Christopher, tell me a little about yourself and, and what's going on about the afterlife. I want to hear this. I, I want to learn. So uh, first of all, again, I'm Christopher Stilson. I'm a renowned psychic medium. I'm a transformational leader. I am an international best-selling author, spiritual teacher, diamond feng shui consultant, and an energy therapist. So I do numerous different things. Um, one of my favorite things to do is obviously talk to the dead. I talk to spirit all the time, and it is one thing that I do all day, every day. Um, so I do readings, uh, personal readings, group readings, parties, groups, and uh, so on and so forth. And people, that's my number one service. So people always tend to come to me to either communicate with their loved ones or get advice and um, see what their future may have to hold. Um, so I've been talking to Spirit ever since I was born. And I remember at the age of four, actually fully communicating with my Spirit Guide, Anna, who I didn't know was my Spirit Guide at the time. And uh, it was remarkable from uh, my life changes. So what first started happening was my mom was in an abusive uh, marriage and the man, uh, my father, had her pinned down on the couch and was screaming in her face. So I went behind the love seat and began to cry. And this woman appeared out of nowhere. And she looked at me with a smile on her face and she said, Christopher, your life's about to change. Just listen to me. And ever since then, I never seen her again, but I always heard her voice. And what would happen would when something was happening or a situation was happening, it would come in as um, a echo or it sounds like Elwin and the Chipmunks when they talk mm -hmm. to me, um, which gets quite annoying sometimes, to be honest. <laughs> um, so what, my life did change. We went from uh, pretty much dirt poor. My mom had to pretty much starve herself just so us kids can eat. She would pick out of the pan and then give us the rest of the food. And we went from there into a beautiful home and all that. And we have my stepfather, who I call my father, come into my life when I was five. And he's been there ever since. So my life did change. And everything after that kind of continued to flow. I uh, tried to block spirit out, though, which was uh, something that apparently I wasn't allowed to do like most people because it caused me to have severe anxiety and depression um, and then when I started actually finally connecting with Anna, it was when I was having a panic attack and I said, I just want this anxiety to go away uh, right out loud in my bedroom. And she came in loud and clear and said, well, if you would just listen to me, I can help you. And I made an agreement with her. Fine. If you help me for now, I'll listen to you. If you can't help me, leave me the hell alone. I, I don't want, you know, I don't want to deal with it. So she explained to me that I was a psychic medium, that I had to use this gift and um, that it was my job to. And uh, she had taught me how to channel. And after she taught me how to channel, the anxiety went away. And I've been living more freely and happily ever since. So um, I then started doing readings uh, when I was 16. And there were just many ones here and there. And then I started doing them part time as I got older. And then I started doing them full time um, probably nine years now. So um, I've been doing readings full time and I got dabbled into energy work and things like that. So doing the energy therapy and the feng shui and um, all of those fun jazz, all of those fun jazz. But that's who I am. That's how I work and all of that stuff. And now for the best part, the life after death. Uh, one of the, best, the biggest and most interesting topics for people um, you know, uh, like you said, you find it interesting. A lot of people find it interesting because it's something that they don't really think about or it's something they were brought up with in uh, religion. And just to get on the topic real quick of religion, I am a firm believer in God. I do like to talk about God and things like that. Um, but uh, there are certain things that 
spirit has taught me and other studies have taught me into the truth behind heaven and the other side. So that's what I like to point out is that um, what I'm about to say of what happens on the afterlife, you probably never even heard before, or you may have thought about, but never really connected with. So when you first pass away, so when you die, um, a tunnel will form from your solar plexus and it will also um, form from the side of you. So it comes from the solar plexus and goes this way. Um, and then obviously it comes from this way, this way. So it kind of collides to create that tunnel that everyone goes through, that light tunnel. Now, people think that heaven is up in the sky, which it is not. It's actually three feet off of our floor. And what happens is when people bring me pictures in and say, do you see this ghost? They're floating or, you know, do you see this? They're not floating. They're walking on their floor. They don't float, <laughs> you know? So I always have to laugh about it going, no, honey, they're not floating. Um, but it is three feet off of our floor. So um, the tunnel will form, like I said, through the solar, from the solar plexus and then from the side and then it kind of collides together. You will then go into this beautiful light tunnel. And when you go through this beautiful light tunnel, um, you will then go backwards. If you, if you pass at an old age, you will go backwards to the age of 30. And if you actually pass at a young age, you will go up to the age of 30. Everybody apparently on their side is 30 years old. Now, there is no time and age on their side. But if you ask spirit, they will always say, if it was timed like we are in the physical world, everyone would be 30 years old. Um, so you go through this tunnel and then you're 30 years old. When you get to the end of this tunnel, usually you'll see your spirit guide first. Um, you can also see a loved one that has passed before you. And you get to pick where you want to go. So you can either go to this beautiful bridge or you can actually go to this beautiful field of flowers. And um, it's like an open field. And uh, people usually tend to, what I've heard is people usually tend to pick the field. And when you go to these two different types, different areas, you actually get to see every single loved one that has passed before you did. So you're actually embraced with hugs and kisses and um, you get to talk a little bit. So everybody that you are close with, that you connected with, you will then get to see all over again. It's like a big family reunion. They all love it. It's a celebration. And what I find funny is that when you cross over, when you cross back over to the other side, whatever day you cross back over to the other side technically becomes your birthday. So how we have a birthday here, you actually have a celebration of ho going home over there. So um, it's your celebration of home um, every year. So while we're mourning, crying, and complaining about um, someone that's passed on a certain day here, they're on the other side celebrating and living it up. Um, on the other side, you only have two emotions, unconditional love and pure happiness. So you only, you don't have the human bull crap. You don't have the stress, the anxiety, the depression. That's all human. Uh, the reason why us humans have these human emotions is because we learn through these human emotions. And that's the only reason we come to the physical world is to learn. So the human emotions help us learn faster. Um, so when you're on the other side, you only have the two emotions, unconditional love and pure happiness. And you have, a, a, apparently you have a physical body and this physical body has physical organs, but you do not have to use them. And it's all in good health. So you have pure good health over there. There's no illnesses, no mental illnesses, no nothing. Um, if you lost a limb in the physical world and you cross over the limbs back all over again, Mm -hmm. and uh, you're full of good health, like I said. When you then um, have that human, that human, that physical body again over there, because you do have a, a type of physical body, it's a mirrored image of here. So your gallbladder, which is on the right side here, is actually on the left side over there. So everything is on the mirror side. Um, and like I said, you don't need them. They're just there. Um, I don't know why we have to have that, like we have them over there. Um, but it is true. And then um, when you're done meeting everybody and connecting with all of your loved ones that have passed before you did, and this includes animals too. I have to mention that because a lot of people always bring up how there's a different type of heaven for animals. No, they're not fully wrong. 
but they are wrong when they say that you won't see your animals again. When I was um, asking Anna about it and studying into it, she informed me that there that heaven is for all energy and all spirit. So that infor- that also includes animals, but there are seven levels to heaven and animals are actually on one of those levels. So they are separate level, but it's all still intertwined with um, what it all is. And when you get to level, when, when you get to level seven, which apparently a lot of people actually stop at level six, they don't really achieve themselves to level seven fully. There mm-hmm. are some souls that will choose to do so, but level seven is when you get absorbed back into God. You fully feel as if you just wanna merge back in with him. And so when you go to level seven, you're absorbed back into God. Um, But most of the time people will, we, you know, our souls love to be there. They love to learn. And that's what we do on our side. Most of the time is still study and learn. So we kind of stop at that level six um, once we, you know, once we really uh, get to level six. So that's, and that's another thing too, is when people talk about perfection, um, everything on our side is perfect. But the reason why we learn and study is to perfect ourselves even more. And, you know, God is all knowing, all loving and all forgiving, but our souls learn for him. So we're like little fax machines here in the physical world. We fax all the information from um, how we get dressed, how we drive our cars. It all gets faxed to him. So he's actually getting more information, um, even though he's all knowing he's getting more information. Yeah. Um, and we're learning and studying for ourselves to perfect ourselves for ourselves and perfect ourselves for God. So we want to raise those different levels. So um, when you uh, uh, when you choose to go to certain when you choose to go to certain levels as well, uh, let's say you're level six, but you know someone may be at a level three, you can go down to three to visit and connect and all that stuff. Um, sadly three can't go up to six though. Um, it's like this whole, uh, leveling system, but, uh, so there's a the levels. Um, and then the connection with people, when, you know how they say God judges you. Mm-hmm. He doesn't judge you. Um, you judge yourself. So what happens there is after you're done visiting all of your loved ones and connecting with all of your loved ones, you actually go to a place called the hall of wisdom. And in this hall of wisdom, you get to view your whole life all over again from birth to death. You know how people say my life flashed you from my eyes? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Literally happens. You get to see it all over again from birth to death. Wow. And not only do you get to see it, you get to feel it. And not only do you get to feel how you felt, you actually get to feel how you treated people. So what happens is I always tell people, treat people with kindness because once you get over there, you're going to hate how they feel when you treat them not, you know, poorly. Um, so always treat people with kindness. But you, um, after you view your whole life and you feel it all, you then get to judge yourself. So God won't judge. God's not a judgmental person. He knows that you went down here to, you came here to learn and connect and do whatever you needed to do. Um, but you judge yourself. So when you're when you look at your life all over again. You get to say, okay, I did that correctly. I feel good with that. Okay, that I could have done a little bit better on. Let's hold on to that. Because if I decide to make another life with the reincarnation, I might want to put that lesson back in there. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, so you get to pick and choose and kind of go, okay, I did good here. So you're judging yourself. You're judging who you were and um, what you did. Right. And uh, you're not so hard on yourself like you would be here in the physical world, though. Yes. You're not sitting here going, oh, crap, or, you know, I, I feel depressed now because you, you, you understand differently when you're over there. Right. So you're not so hard on yourself with it, but you do judge yourself. And then after you're done judging yourself, um, you get to go about on your merry way. So you get to do things that you enjoy doing in the physical world still, even past life things as well, because you'll remember each and every single one of your lives. So if like, maybe not in this life, you didn't like to play cards, but in a past life, you like to play cards. That was one of your favorite things to do. You'll get back into cards on the other side. So you'll do things that you enjoy doing and you'll play with you. Know, there's art and things like that. Now, because heaven is only three feet off the ground, um, they have, uh, it's like mapped out how we have it here. Mm-hmm. So um, 
there's a there's actually apparently a uh, park in London, I believe it was, where it's like an open field park. And if you sit there quietly, you'll be able to hear um, singing. And what the thing is, is that what, what it is, is it's actually because that's where the chorus of angels stand to sing. Mm -hmm. So because it's mapped out where we're at, a house could be on top of my house. Mm -hmm. you know um because it's all mapped out that way but they have things over there that are similar to what we have every well everything actually they have art still over there so there's a copy of the mona lisa over there um there's museums you can go to um there's this beautiful round stage with beautiful white pillars and um those the seating area uh, where people actually do lectures. They'll still teach if they taught in the physical world and enjoy doing it. They'll still teach on the other side and they'll share their experiences from this side. Um, so they'll still teach. Now there is still jobs. A lot of people get disappointed when I say that you still work over there, um, <laughs> but there is still jobs. Now I, there's a area that I call the, I call them tinkerers. So every single thing in the physical world that you see right now actually originated from the other side first. They create it first. And then what they do is they put it into someone's head as an idea. And then that idea then gets created in the physical world here. Mm -hmm. So the light bulb, for example, drop down. That's where yeah. I have this idea, you know, right. um, things like that. So spirit will drop down the idea. So everything that we have in the physical world is over there. Now, um, that's what their that's what their job is. They tinker, they create, they yeah. they make things, um, and whatnot. Then there's uh, problems with people with it. They talk about, well, I you know I love my ring so much. I what I would like to take that with me. <laughs> well, you don't need the ring here. Um, you know you can keep it here. But if you enjoyed a piece of jewelry or you know whatever in the physical world, you just have to think about it, and it shows up on your finger. Mm. um or it shows up on your neck or whatever um because you enjoyed it so much right the funny thing is too is that you can actually change your appearance over there um so if you enjoyed being uh an asian woman um in a past life and that was one of your like let's say the the uh the eye trait that they have um was one of your favorite looks on you you yeah. just have to think about it and your eyes will form into that and when I mention that, people go, well, how do I know who's my father, who's my sister, who's, you know, it doesn't matter what they look like, you know, by the vibration, because it's all about vibration over there. So, you know, if you and I were to pass, I would know who you are, even if you change your looks, because you and I have that, you know, I'll know by the vibration, I'll know yeah. who you are. Um, so you can change your look over there um, and things like that. It's apparently always 75 degrees. Um, and there's always this beautiful spring breeze. It is always sunny. Uh, what I found out and I found very interesting though, is that if they do want to enjoy a night sky, they all come together and they pretty much create, cause you can create over there, yeah. um, the form of a night sky and they'll have the night sky for a little bit, but then that will go away into sun again and you'll have sun for, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, the reason why it's always sunny is because we don't need sleep. You know, we here in the physical world use nighttime as a sleep time. Usually, I should say, not a lot of people do. <laughs> um, but we usually, and so when you're over there, um, you don't need sleep. You're only pure energy. So there's no yeah. need to sleep. You know, you, you're a constant move of vibration. Right. Um, so you don't need sleep over there. Uh, and um your houses you can change the look of your house just by thinking of it um and you know you don't want a wall there knock that wall down by thinking about it you know i really wish we had that here because yeah. you know how many messes you could save just by you know <laughs> just by thinking it's not there yeah and it's just not there not there it's, um, gone. it's gone forever um well not forever but you know um, <laughs> but yeah so you can just think of it and it happens um, there's, uh, the reincarnation process too. you yeah. now people all the time talk about, um, well, what if my grandma reincarnates before I get there? 
yeah. you know, what if I don't get to see my grandma? Most of the time, it's a very rare area, but most of the time, a soul will wait for everyone that they knew in the physical world to cross over, then yeah. reincarnate if they choose to do so. It is a choice. Um, but uh, is some, there are some souls that are very eager to get back. So they'll say, no, I just want to reincarnate quickly. You know, I just want it to happen. Yeah. Um, my mother had a miscarriage in between my sister and brother. So I'm the oldest. It goes brother, brother, sister. Well, mm-hmm. me, brother, sister. So mm-hmm. in between my brother and my sister, my mom had a miscarriage. And um, obviously that soul didn't have to wait because we didn't, you know, we didn't fully get that connection with that soul, I should right. say. Um, but uh when my sister, she, I can't remember how old she was. She just started talking. You know, she was still in a, boot, a car seat and she just started talking and they were in the car and my, my sister, the young, my the youngest one, she said, um, uh, mommy, remember when I died inside your tummy? And my mom was like, you never died inside my tummy. She goes, yeah, you were with the other man, which would have been her father. Wow. But my mom had five kids all together. So the youngest one, um, she's not even 16 yet. So, you know, she, um, she came back in as the, the youngest daughter and she has a new father now because it isn't the father that she would have had. Right. 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 Um, so she decided just to come right back. She was like, Nope, I have to do this. I have to yeah. go back. Um, and so she, and she, and she knew my, my whole family, pains in the ass as I'll tell you that right now but <laughs> um <laughs> but um my mom had five children we're all psychic and no one else wants to use it but me I'm the, I'm the only active psychic in the family wow you know and th- they'll get bits and pieces of things and they'll come to me and they'll tell me things but I won't act surprised because that's my damn life like yeah. you know, why am I gonna act so surprised yeah, yeah. she had you know, you know she had five children we're all psychic and I'm the only active one, but I'm not surprised that my youngest sister um, said that because we're a whole spiritual family, you know? Yeah. So she decided to come back very quickly. She just jumped, you know, right back into the the process. Now the process of reincarnate um, is very interesting. So we all have a spirit guide, every single one of us. Um, and when you are ready to incarnate into a new life, you will choose your spirit guide first. Now, people all the time go, is my mom my spirit guide? Is my grandma my spirit guide? Who the hell guided you to the day they died? Yeah. You know, you would have to have someone there. Now, that doesn't mean your loved ones can't help guide you. Um, but you have a spirit guide. Now, Anna, nobody in my life. I've never met this person in the physical world. So, you know, Anna has always been there since I was born, before I was born, technically. Um, but she's always been there. So you choose your spirit guide. And usually you'll choose a spirit guide that went through somewhat of certain um, certain lessons that you want to now. Yeah. So that way they can help you through it. Um, is that is that necessary all the time? No, because sometimes a spirit guide wants to learn through certain lessons as well that you're going through. Yeah. Um, but uh, most of the time, it will be someone that went through similar um, areas. And uh, so you choose your spirit guide. Then you will sit down with your spirit guide and you will write your whole life out. And people get angry when I say that. I got angry when I first found out about it. Right. Because when I first heard it, I was like, are you kidding me right now? You know, why would I write this? And I said to Anna, I said, so you're telling me right now that I wrote daddy issues all over my goddamn chart. And she said, you did not write daddy issues, but you did choose your father so he can put you through the situations that you were supposed to learn from. Yeah. Um, so that's what we do. So you chart it all out. Now we do have free will in the physical world. So, you know, there are some things that we can mess up here and there and things like that, but we learn best through that anyways. Yeah. Um, but there is a chart that we're supposed to follow. Now our spirit guides are supposed to guide us through those charts. That's why their job is to guide them. Oh, to this that's why they're a spirit guide. Um and so they're they know what our chart is, they know what we should be doing, and then they kind of just push us along the way. So you'll you'll do your chart and then you'll kind of choose, you know, when your birthday is gonna be, when you know, 
who your parents are going to be, what personality traits, and then you just kind of get dropped down in a body, and here we are. Right. Um, which is the best thing ever, don't you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But um, and then you'll then after that life, you'll go back and you'll just kind of redo whatever it is that you want to do over there and um, how it is over there. Now, one thing that people always talk about or love to ask me about is hell, because people are actually very curious of because, you know, we're, we're programmed in the physical world. that if you do so much wrong, you're going to go to hell. Yeah. And in reality, there is no such thing as hell. Mm -hmm. This is hell right here on this, you know, this is hell. This is, this is where we go. Now, um, what you do, what you, usually what happens is not everybody is evil. Just because you're doing something wrong doesn't make you evil. You're right. learning through the experience. That's all you're here for. Yeah. You know, that's all you're here for. So these people that think they're evil, you're not evil. The people that are truly evil are people that will stab you, but it's your fault because you ran into the damn knife. Right. You know, those are truly Jeffrey Dahmer, Adolf Hitler, um, Marilyn, was it Marilyn Man Manson. Manson. Yeah, Marilyn Manson. You know, all those people that did harm, people that do harm to people, you know, and all of that stuff, that's truly evil. And God doesn't make evil people. Let's just say that too. Yeah. What happens is when you come here as a soul, you come here in three different types of three different types of souls. There's the light souls, there's the gray souls, and then there's the dark souls. And um, God didn't create them like that. But when you get dropped in the physical world, um, you kind of have egos and things like that. And you can truly lose yourself, which makes it become harder. Yeah. Um, so these people, such as Jeffrey Dahmer, for example, it was the fact that uh, he pretty much didn't listen to his spirit guide the first time. And he just went so far off track. He wasn't really doing what he should have been doing. And he had so much of this human trait of ego that it just fell apart. Mm -hmm. And what happens with these people is they go right back in the womb to be reborn again. So Jeffrey Dahmer is somewhere back, back again on this, in this world. And that's because you get recycled. And um, it's called going through the left door. Um, you then get recycled. Now, this is why some parents go, I don't know what I did wrong. I tried to raise my child the right way, but they were always doing this and doing this and doing this. I'm sorry you had Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm sorry you had Adolf Hitler. And it's not the fact that you chose that. It's just that they had to go into a womb somewhere. Yeah. You know, and they're then reborn in the physical world. And people go, well, you know, if God's not all knowing, all, all, all knowing, all loving and all forgiving, why would he not allow all the souls to enter? Yeah. Well, because he's allowing all the souls to enter, but Evil people don't think the way we do, where we're like, oh, I want to go home. Yeah. You know, they pretty much just, when they die, they, they get, they get, they come out like they, what we all do. And they go, oh no, I'm not going there. Mm -mm. And they go through the left door, which then puts them back into the womb. Or it's just pretty much a dark abyss that people just travel through with their heads down, sadly. Um, and that's where they, with, what happens with them. And then after a certain amount of times of them recycling and recycling and recycling, an angel will come down and go, okay, that's enough. And then they automatically just get absorbed back into God where, you know, they're, they're gone. Um, but uh, that's what the, that's what true hell is, is this, this world sadly. And I do want to point out because a lot of people say, say to me, you know, this person always seems to get their way, but they're mean and hurtful and angry. Well, yeah, because this is hell. You know, when we go to heaven, we get our true prize, our true present, our true gift. We get things that we want. This is hell. Evil people will triumph a little bit more because they have that power to, yeah. sadly. Um, so that's where that comes into. And uh, ghost as well. With ghosts, because people do like to talk about ghosts a lot too. They, you know, 
um, they bring up ghosts all the time. And with ghosts, when a soul come, you know, is about to cross over, mm -hmm. what happens is the soul decides, well, I'm not going over there. I, I don't want to go over there, not in a bad way, but they're afraid usually. Yeah. I did too much wrong. I don't want God to judge me. And um, uh, I can't remember that other third thing. But um, so they kind of just say, I can't go into that light. I'm afraid to. I don't want, you know, God to judge me. I don't want to, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they kind of turn their back from the light and turn their back from God. And then they get stuck in between, which mm -hmm. is the physical world in heaven yeah um and when they get stuck in between 96 to 97 percent of the time they don't even know they're dead right they don't and that's where people find these hauntings at people say like you know this keeps getting thrown across this and this keeps happening and the reason for that is because if it is a ghost and they don't even know they're dead mm -hmm. you're invading their space why the hell are you here? That's what they're saying. Why the hell are you here? And they're trying to get you out. They want to scare you. They mm -hmm. think that you're invading their personal space. Um, and there are some ghosts that do know they're dead, um, but they're very, they're very depressed, very sad, broken type of souls, which is very heartbreaking. And you can help them cross over for them to understand and things like that. Um, so uh ghosts are a very interesting area that's where you know people talk about these these hauntings and yeah. um all of that which i always have to laugh at because i'm just like you just talk to them tell them to leave you hell alone you know yeah. um and that's where that comes in and um i'm trying to think of anything else that's um about the other side because there's so much about the other side over there that's just it's beautiful and um, it's home, but sadly we decided to come here just to learn and live and do this crap, you know? <laughs> we can, we choose to come back here. So mm -hmm. it's not, it's not something that we're, we choose to come back. And then yeah. what about when you, when you hear people talk about their, they came from light years away and you talk about the levels like, what's the difference when people are light year that, you know, they came from light years away and they were really advanced. And then you talk about the different levels that you were talking about earlier. Yeah. So there are these things um, that I'm still studying into this because I find it interesting and I have been looking it up a lot lately, but there's these things called star children. And, you know, we actually can choose what planet to incarnate on apparently now. I don't know if, you know, if you guys are listening to, uh, to this this podcast and you've listened to previous podcasts um, from with, with us too before, um, I am a skeptic medium. So it takes me a little bit to actually believe in what I'm doing or studying and um, all of that. I have, I question everything and have to really look deep into it. I believe that there is other life forms. Um, because we can't just be the only planet that has life forms. Right. Um, I believe that there are aliens among us because they're more, they are more advanced than we are. Do I believe in adoptions? No, I, I don't personally believe in adoptions. Um, because whenever I hear about adoptions, I look at them going, why you, what makes you so interesting yeah. for them to grab you, you know? Right. Um, but I do believe aliens are here. And the only reason they're here is to help us because let's face it earth is stupid <laughs> you know we we're, <laughs> we we're very ignorant here um so they are trying to help out as much as possible um but uh which reminds me too anna has talked to me about how you will start to see um more alien contact mm -hmm. coming up within the year of 2025 so there's a psychic prediction, you guys, right there, what she what she's saying, where you'll start to see, like, obviously, we've already seen bits and pieces of things, yeah. but you'll start to see more clearly of things um, within this next coming year. Um, and then uh, with that, so star children, star children are uh, souls that, that apparently were on another planet and decided to come to Earth to learn even more. Right. Um, so they just wanted to reincarnate on uh, on this planet. Now, Earth is what spirit calls 
the insane asylum of all planets to incarnate on. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I believe they actually it. Say, I, yeah, they actually say that Earth is one of the hardest planets to come to. And they say that the souls that do choose to come here um, are the strongest souls because of what goes on here. Uh, and there are actually souls, believe it or not, on the other side that are we call chickens that have never incarnated. They mm -hmm. don't want to. Um, but yeah, so um, with those people that believe that they had past life experiences on different planets is because apparently um, from what I'm looking into, what Anna has informed me so far, because like I said, I am very skeptical on things, um, is that they are uh, what we call star children and they have come from another planet before. Um, now, when people say star children, the people think like, well, this uh, uh, alien knocked up a child, uh, you know, knocked up someone here and now they're it's a star child no a star child is someone that had a previous life in uh on another planet and they are technically more advanced um in a way due to the fact that uh uh they've had that experience from past lives S the sad part is is that you don't get to remember your past lives here in the physical world yeah. So sometimes that advancement, when you'll you'll see a very smart, smart, brilliant child on certain things, but as they get older, you'll kind of see that kind of go away, and it's because they don't remember that life anymore. Yeah. Um, and children tend to remember a lot more than we do as we get older. Yeah. Um, and that's why. But yeah, so there are people that will come from other planets and um, other places just to learn more and learn apparently the hard way. Right. Yeah. And when yeah. it comes to ghosts, like, um, are those the people who just didn't cross over? So after they have passed, they they haven't like actually crossed over for and, and what are the reasons why they don't cross over? Is there any particular reason why they don't cross over? So um they are souls that don't fully cross over. They they pretty much step out of their body, but they don't go all the way through the tunnel. They're just like, no. Um Believe it or not, Anna has informed me before that there used to be a lot more ghosts than there is nowadays. And the reason for that was of religion, because when the soul would step out of the body, those people that were, you know, forced with religion and stuff, when, people, when they would step out of their body, they would go, oh, I created so many sins. God's not going to want me over there. And they, step, they, they become a ghost. They kind of step back. Or the soul may think that they did some horrible things and they don't deserve to go. Yeah. Um, or they may have unfinished business where they feel like they didn't fully get to finish what they needed to. Mm -hmm. And they kind of just get stuck. Um, which is interesting too, because it's a, it's a good area to bring up cocooning. There's a thing called cocooning on the other side too, where um, if you die tragically, really tragically, or you are holding on to a lot of energy, but you did cross over, you go into a thing called cocooning where God will put you to sleep and pretty much clear out your energy. And then once you awaken, you feel completely whole again. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a beautiful, you know, I, I literally talked to Anna one day about this because I was like, why don't they have that here? Like, yeah. why can't we have cocooning for depressed people or... Yeah you know we how need nice would that be like that. yeah yeah like oh i'm feeling depressed let me cocoon for a little bit mm -hmm. you know um but you know we always gotta learn through the hard stuff here so but yeah so um with souls they there's there's there are many different reasons but the main ones are from unfinished business or they feel as if god's not gonna want them over there or they feel as if they did something horribly wrong and don't feel like they deserve to um where they get stuck but in reality they could they could just cross right over yeah so you overall know. it doesn't really matter if they've committed sins or they've you know done bad things while they were here you know it, it's not looked at like that on the other side and so when person passes over they should be more you know not so fearful but it's going to be a place of you know uh, an, a, a place where they, they're going to enjoy and they're going to be fulfilled and they're actually going to be happy once they get there and they go through the process of the tunnel. It's not, it's not something to be feared, but to really be celebrate in a sense. 
Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. But the thing though is too, is that um, the rule is, and this is a rule that I live by full heartedly is do what you wish. Just do no harm. You know, you're allowed to live your life and be happy and at peace and you're allowed to do things, but as long as you're not killing anyone or yeah. hurting people purposely, right? You know, things like that. You that's you know, and the word sin is such a to me, it's a stupid word. You yeah, know, it, I it, agree with you. I, even though I said when, it, I, I do agree with you because it, yeah. it's it's man made. It is. It is man made. But to be honest, people don't know what the true wording word of sin means. Sin just means miss your mark. Mm -hmm. It's a lesson that you're missing the mark of you. Yeah. You feel like you did. Some, but in reality, you there's you know, we make mistakes, but people use these the word sin for such, you know, they, it's a it's a fear factor. Yeah. You know, and it, it's it's sad and annoying. Um, but in reality, there is no true sin. If you really want to talk about sin, let's talk about the people that are murdering people or, you know, you know, I don't want to use uh profanely words but like really like doing Harm others yeah really bad things like that is what you what i would call sin to be honest mm -hmm. you know just because you know your 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 sexual orientation is not a sin you no. know your your um you know choice on what your what color tie you're gonna wear isn't a sin you know right. people use the most ridiculous things for sins and it's not a sin Sin to me would be you literally doing so much wrong, hurtful and hateful things. Yes. That to me is sin. I agree with you. I definitely yeah. agree with you hundred percent. Yeah. And people just need to realize, you know, in, in the physical world, live your life. Yes. You know, what Sylvia Brown has always said is you, you, you know, you come here, you learn, and then you shut up and go home. That's mm -hmm. what it is, you know? And she even states, you know, do as you wish, just do no harm. Yes. You know, you, as long as you're doing everything out of love and care and you're looking after people and teaching people and embracing people, that's truly what matters here. That yeah. is truly what matters. And I try to live by that every day. I always ask God, place me where I need to be today and whoever I can help today, let me help. I love you know, it. Yeah. And that's what I always want to do. I always want to help. Right. Now, if we had to take everything that we learned today, what would be some, some takeaways, some things that you want to emphasize to people? One, I don't want people to fear death. There's so many people that fear death because they don't know what happens on their yes. side. Don't fear death. One of the things I've learned too is that people truly don't. There, there's a lot of people that fear death because they don't understand what goes on, on their side. But most of the time, the reason why people fear death is due to the fact that they they it, they don't know how they're going to die. That's yeah. usually the biggest fear is not knowing how. Yeah. Um, and uh, in reality, who cares? As long as you're going home, right? That, that's what I. Always <laughs> as long as I'm going home, as long as I'm getting over there. Um, the second thing I would always take away is continue to do good always do good because yeah. when you cross over their side and you check your whole life out all over again you want to embrace every good thing that you can do you can put in god's work and or you know and i i, I use the word god because i'm a firm believer in god but mm -hmm. i always tell people whatever you believe in in a higher power and a greater good use that do yes. the greater good you know do all that you can um and then the third thing would possibly be you know make a heaven out of your hell. Yeah. So, you know, when you're, li when you, when you're home on their side, it's beautiful. It's peaceful. It's, it's, it's remarkable, but here in the physical world, you don't have to live as if you are in hell, yeah. you know, create that happiness, create what, you know, what your soul feels the need to do yeah. for that pure love and happiness. Yeah. You know, and I do that every day. I do whatever the whatever makes me happy i try to do my best too because if i'm happy the world will be happy because yes. and i'm not saying it as a cocky way but it it, it uh, like i always say i light my lamp to light your lamp you yes. know so whatever makes me happy will make everyone else happy yes you know so 
create a habit out of your health, you know, change your life up, stop living as if you're um, dragging ass in a way, I should say, you know, you don't want to do that. You want to make sure you're, you're embracing it and enjoying it and make the most out of it. And I, I love those, those comments. And I have one question while you were saying that, I think one, one thing that people, you know, bothers them when they're coming to the end or you know, they're about to finish their journey, um, you know, the people they're leaving on earth that they've made really close connections with, the people that they loved, the people that they cared deeply for, you know, once they cross over, you know, will that connection still stay? Will they be able to visit them? Will they be able to share with them? Will they be able to help them if help is needed? Oh yeah, that's what my that's what my job is to talk to dead people for crying out loud. You know, I do everything I want. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it it does. It truly does. Where your loved ones are always there. You know, when people are, when this brings up a really good uh, good memory of mine. I have a grand my grandfather Burns. Um, he was dealing with Alzheimer's dementia for years, yeah. years, and he was on his deathbed finally. And I've never watched someone die. I can't ever watch someone die. I don't like to go to hospitals and stuff. That's not my cup of tea. Yeah. But Anna, my spirit guide, obviously, told me one day, you need to go visit your grandpa. And I said, I'm not going there. I'm not going to watch him. I said, he can talk to me when he's dead. You know, I I do it for a living. He can come to me. And she left it at that. A week later, it was a Friday. She goes, you need to go visit your grandfather. And I said, why do I need to go visit him? And she goes, he's waiting for you. Uh, so, which broke my heart. So that Sunday I went and visited him. I, like I said, I'd never done that before. And when I entered the room and I sat down, the amount of angels that I seen standing around the bed and his loved ones, it was like I I, I could feel heaven's gates open like the the energy in the room felt pure and hopeful and beautiful and i seen a few of his loved ones standing around the bed and there was angels standing around the bed so even when someone's sick and dying they're here they're here they're 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 guiding they're helping they're embracing and all of that and when he and he did um pass the next day so he was waiting for me sadly i didn't do not don't ever want to deal with that but he did pass the next day um but uh so they are but even when you're not dying on like you know you and I right now yeah our loved ones are around us right They, they like to embrace us and whatnot now when they're on the other side depending on how long they're over there in our time um the more distance they become from the physical world. So when they first pass, they'll be around us a lot, helping us, guiding us and dealing with the grief and whatnot. But when they cross over, what they do is they kind of step back and um, the, the longer they're over there, they'll step back. So you might not feel them around a lot more. You know, they'll be like, why don't I feel my grandpa anymore? But well, they'll yeah. just come and go because they're not going to be up our asses. You right. know, they, they want us to still do what they need to do, but they do come around. They're always here always and if we call them they respond correct they they love it they love when people talk to spirit they talk to them um so they still listen to conversations that we want to have with them um when we call upon them they will help us depending on what we need sometimes there's certain lessons in life that they can't help us with because we wrote it we had to live through it yeah but there are some areas where they can tweak it up for us or help us with i love it i love it now, how can people contact you if they want to you know, have, you know, uh, participate in one of your services? So you can visit my website, www.christopherstilson.com. Um, all the information is on there of what I do and um, the background into the three lux uh, that I work with and um, obviously booking for a reading. And I believe my social media is on there as well. So you can go to Facebook, which is... Um, Facebook.com slash the Stilsons. Uh, there's Instagram, Psychic Christopher Stilson. 
Um, so there's numerous things that you guys can go on and kind of check out and look at and follow. There's um, a big announcement coming for some uh, big projects that I have been working on. So I'm excited for that. And uh, yeah, so you can check it out at www.christopherstilson.com. I love it. And is there anything else you'd like to say before we close that you can think of or? Just allow yourself to live life to the fullest, embrace life and just allow you to be you and be happy. I love it. Well, Christopher, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on the show and everybody check out all his videos. He has his own podcast on here. He's on the advisor. You'll find him on YouTube. You'll find him on all the platforms. Check him out, check his, his website out and you won't be disappointed. I absolutely love him. I've worked with him. He is amazing. He is accurate. He is to the point and he is effective. So everybody check him out. Thank you so much, Christopher, for today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye.